they tell us the stories, the challenges they overcame, and how they're impacting the society, hence the strength of a woman. So in studio today, I am joined by a very resilient, brilliant woman who has actually just not only conquered her challenges in life, but she has also decided to give back to the society. So my guest today is known as Abigail Okello. She is the founder of Jawabu for Communities. Hi, hi Abigail. Hey. How are you doing? I'm fine. Uh -huh. Thanks for having me here today. Hey, karibu, karibu, <laughs> karibu. I am really excited. Sure. I guess I'll tell you why. Because uh, let me just, can I, can I give them information before they have this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> so behind the scene, Abigail is telling me that she, uh, it's been a beautiful year for you, for you right? Yeah. And right now, uh, is it today that you're celebrating your anniversary? Exactly. Hey. How, how how many years? Nine years in marriage and I don't regret. Oh, fantastic. I love the last part. Yeah. I love the last part. I do not regret. Happy nine years of anniversary. Happy anniversary Thank to you. Nine Thank years, you. that's a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank but I'm glad that you're enjoying your marriage as well. So before you even uh, <laughs> get into deep into that, yeah. let's all start from the beginning. Someone who's meeting Abigail for the first time. Mm -hmm. Who is Abigail? Tell us a brief story of who Abigail Okello is. Okay, Abigail, my name is Abigail Okello, mm -hmm. founder of Jawabu for Communities, and um, I was born in the slums of Kibera, and uh, first born of six children, uh, where um, my only dream was to get married, to uh, thinking that I'm breaking the cycle of poverty. And most girls in the slums usually think that when you get married, you're actually running away from poverty, not uh, keeping in mind that you're actually uh, going through the cycle of mm. poverty. Because most of the time you just want to leave your home to go in this uh, small house with this man, forgetting that you'll also have kids and you'll be conjectured because most of the time the girls want their own space. Yeah. So I, I, I just wanted to get married and I never used to perform well because I was also bullied in primary school. All I wanted was just to get married. So What was going, going through your mind? Was it like... Was it like a rescue situation? Do you feel exactly. like when you get married, it'll be like he's rescuing you from this poverty? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I was really bullied, so I thought like I didn't have any, a, any chance in life with education or any career. So I thought maybe my full-time job will become a housewife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is maybe the, the vision and the, um, the dream uh, then. So I went through primary school where I was bullied because I came from the slums, uh, of course being beaten up by boys, uh, being abused. I remember there's this specific uh, boy who used to call me the ugly one boy. My middle name was one boy, mm -hmm. the ugly one boy. And I had no self-esteem, no self-value. So when I went to high school, I made sure that I don't tell people where I am from and my story. Because oh, so, like, you have experienced that in primary where people are looking down on you because exactly. of where you come from. Exactly. Before, before even getting into high school, tell me how was life generally? Like, what was the setup like in your home uh, and just the environment living in, in Kibra? So uh, when you go to school, you're being bullied. When you come back home, there's high crime rates, prostitution teenage pregnancy and the list is just endless so sometimes you come from school where you're being bullied or you're beaten up because you come from the slums and then when you go back home you're chased by these drug addicts like these guys that take marijuana and things like that mm, and then sometimes right. there was a lot of high rape cases mm -hmm. so and then talk about tribal clashes uh, when uh, this Luo, Nubians, Kikuyu, Luo's mm -hmm. clashes and mm -hmm. so like the place was just tense and then sometimes you're busy playing like with other girls and then uh, you just find like there's a man eyeing you somewhere. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ch uh, child molestations yeah, and things like that. All right, uh, Abigail, take me through your relationship with your mom. How was it? Uh, my mom, uh, my mom was very like hardworking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she of course she wanted the best for us. She was also an ambitious woman, and she left her village to come to Nairobi. You know the rural urban migration where you want like uh, 
to like have a better life not only for you and even for your children mm -hmm. so my mom was was very hard working but most of the time she was out uh, looking for staff to help us mm -hmm. you know like maybe it, uh, get good education because I was taken to a good school and that's why they had to work hard to make sure that like I get a good process of life uh, rather than the way like they came from a kind of a life where they had to struggle to mm -hmm. be where they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your dad, how is that relationship? Because I feel like most girls are baby, you know, daddy's yeah. girl. But I would like to understand like uh, your relationship with your dad. How was it? Uh, my dad, uh, he is such a good man. Uh, he really like loved us to get a uh, good education he made sure that he would rather like uh, have torn clothes and you know uh, shoes that are not in good condition but made sure that you had proper education he will like even uh, leave our other siblings just like to go on hungry stomachs but to make sure that you have gone to school you've traveled to school he, he has supported our ambitions whichever course he wanted to do and he believed in women empowerment like uh, making sure like uh, he used to say that nataka usome usisumbuliwe na wanaume you know things mm -hmm. like that he just really uh, worked hard to make sure he's he's been my number one supporter all oh, through fantastic. he has edu with no scholarship his one was educated me through masters fantastic yeah fantastic fantastic mm -hmm. now what i'm getting is here is abigail is in a uh, the parents are loving and supporting and then there's an aspect whereby abigail feels that the only way to run away from this situation the environment i mean uh when it comes to uh, 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 poverty yeah. congestion back at home and it's through marriage yeah. right yeah so and and that was the dream there because one thing you should understand with the slums is uh -huh that uh, you are not exposed to opportunities oh. and information. So the only thing you know is getting married. It's just married. your environment, actually. Yeah, you just know. You know that every beautiful girl you see around must have a boyfriend. Who is so providing all that. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These small, small things like pads. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why didn't Abigail like give up along the way when you drop out in school back in primary, but she went ahead with her education. Yes. What was she chasing? So that? when I went to high school, mm -hmm. and of course, like I didn't want anyone to know that I came from the slums, mm -hmm. because I do want to repeat the same uh, experience that I had in my primary school. So I used to lie a lot, like even the number of siblings we have, like no, no one knew uh, who I was. So I remember there is a, a lady by the name Kate, she started, just like the way girls usually have different stories, and she started telling me about her brother being in Uganda, and that was it. That was my turning point. Like, the, the brother was in Uganda doing four, five, one, six, and now that's how I got the desire to continue studying. And now, instead of leaving our congested home to get married, now to leave Kibera to go to another nation. Mm -hmm. So that's how and I got another dream. Mm -hmm. So an ambition and desire. So like to get better education. Don't forget that in my high school I used to get D minus overall grade. Mm -hmm. So that is in form three that I'm getting information. Kate's brother is in Uganda doing form five, form six. So like, before even continue, uh, where was your mental space while well, in high school? Because you're getting uh, D minus, and then uh, you there's no aspiration before this. Exactly. In, like I just did, before this yeah. information about you know your friend's brother being in a different country yeah. and another dream being born out of that yeah. so where was your mental space at this particular point is it that I just get done with school and get my exactly mm -hmm. and then again I just didn't care mm -hmm. like why should I study what will education like benefit me in the future so when you get married you don't need certificates or you know degrees and things like that so yeah, I, I just didn't care at mm -hmm. the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and as I've told you, while in this, w when you're living in the slums, the only thing that a young girl is given or uh, the dream that a young girl uh, is shown is to get married. Mm -hmm. That is the only dream that is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, take me through now. The new information has come your way that you can actually travel abroad. Yeah, a new dream is born. Mm -hmm. So, uh, talk, take me through the turning point. Yeah, so when I got the information that actually there's Form 5, Form 6, mm -hmm. and I just knew in Kenya we just had the, like, the 844 system, I just got very excited. And in my Form 3, I started now working very hard. 
to actually now recover the wasted years because I never used to go for preps. I used to sleep uh, when you're doing like exams and those cuts. It mm. was so funny. I like, <laughs> I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. Physics, I'll get zero one, first cut, zero two, second, and then overall grade, like maybe, maybe minus something percent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now I had to recover all the wasted time because I wanted to go to Uganda. Remember, mm -hmm. I'm running away from Nigeria. So, and then also the, the other uh, thing in the slums is that when you start uh, being ambitious as a young girl, people try and pull you, you know, mm -hmm. uh, back. Like mm -hmm. they want to be the same or whatever level with them. Okay. So I'm getting to, you know, when I get the information, I now just start getting the desire to live. To live. Yeah. Be, and okay, before you even get to now, the point, the turning point, there's a new dream now Abigail yeah. has received, and she's now trying to work on her grades. So we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back. So guys, back at home, make sure you stay tuned. Uh, we sh we'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. I really don't know why. That song has been also uh, ringing behind my, uh, you know, the head or consistently it's one of those songs when you listen they don't actually stop they keep on they keep on going on in your head welcome back to why in the morning the segment is strength over woman we're celebrating women today and in studio i'm joined with abigail okello she's taking her through her story all the way from kibra to now uh getting into a space of opportunities and aspiring for more in terms of her dreams so uh, abigail we left it at where you you in high school from three there's new information that your friend's brother is in Uganda. Yeah. I will get like a thema, hey, it is. <laughs> Kumbe people can actually go out of the country and, yeah. and actually pursue from five and six. I want that. And I'm going to now change the narrative of my grades and do better. So there we go. Let's pick it up from there. Sure. Uh, as I said earlier, like, I just used to get like overall grade of D, D minus. Mm -hmm. And I used to fail proper. So now, as I said, that I had to make sure like I recovered the wasted time. So when uh, I, I started now studying hard and then also trying to apply for schools in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So when I got my form <laughs> You're being intentional about it now. Okay. Now, when I was in form four, when we were just done with our MOOCs, I started uh, like asking around, has anyone ever to be girl? When I went back home, and then there was this boy, he's called Dennis, that was actually studying in Uganda, but I think form three. In Uganda, he called senior three. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, give me the postal address for your school. And then <laughs> he gave me, and I wrote a letter to the school, mm -hmm. my desire to do my HSC. It's called HSC in Uganda, like my form five, form six, or in Kenya, you can say advanced level. Mm -hmm. And they actually replied the mail, the letter, without my KCAC results. And I was admitted with my MOOCs results. And so that's how I started planning to leave the country and, of course, leaving the slums. Fantastic. Yeah. So all it took for you is... Was a new dream exactly and information that and I information didn't have that you yeah. didn't have that is you uh, you necessarily don't get it in the slums all right so yeah. for you it all along it was just lack of exposure exactly fantastic so yeah. here you are you've been uh, admitted to uh, uh, you know they have accepted you to be part of their school yeah. and just pursue on an advanced level from mm -hmm. five and six with your MOOC yeah. results exactly now take me through that journey now so I remember when I got the admission letter, my dad was so scared. He was like, no, in Uganda, you know, HIV and AIDS, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like our fathers usually, I didn't want to release us. You know, you're still young, you're 17, 18 years. They're like, you mm. cannot travel to another, you're too young. And was there the, the, the aspect of finances as well? Yeah, was that, was, was that a hindrance? Yeah, but mm -hmm. Ugandan education is a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. than you'll be shocked. I mm -hmm. used to pay 9,000 Kenya shillings per term mm -hmm. boarding school. Mm -hmm. You know, when you change it to Ugandan currencies, it's like 250,000, mm -hmm. like a quarter million. Mm -hmm. So, I my dad allowed me now to travel to Uganda. He actually, uh, he's Alini Chorea, like. Mm -hmm the map of how I'll go to, I'll take a bus to Kampala, then from Kampala I ask for the taxi, pa ta taxi parks and then how I'll get to my school. So when I went to Light College, Bulanga, I, I 
and I joined my advanced level, I never looked back. Mm. I studied hard. I think I was number one through out until I joined varsity, like now Makerere University. So that's how I was admitted to Makerere University. Oh my goodness. Yeah. From D <laughs> from D minus to be actually the first in your class. Exactly. And all it took is just uh, just change the narrative and just have a new dream. And Information and motivation. Why didn't you look back? What was that um, resilience and, uh, and consistency on your end? Why didn't you look back? I just did not want like to be mm. another statistics, like a teenage mother, um, a school dropout. And you know, even though you finished your form four, like where will you get like uh, a good job with, like mm -hmm. with your form four certificates? Mm -hmm. And then the more I was now exposed to this other country, the more like I learned new things that I didn't know when I was in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And now like my ambition now to even, you know, my self value and self esteem was also mm -hmm. growing at the time. Mm -hmm. And of course I was feeling good about myself. I was no longer uh, the ugly one boy, you know. All right. Yeah. And now there's self awareness. Exactly. Allow me to take you back. Initially you mentioned that when you're when you're in primary school, there was an issue of bullying. The yeah. environment was negative to a point whereby I believe that there was no confidence. Exactly. And uh, also when it comes to just self-awareness and self-worth as well. Yeah. Now in this particular, you're in a new country. Yeah. They, they do their things in a very different way. Of culture course. is different. Did you experience culture shock? <laughs> of course, when they forced me to kneel down while washing a man's hand and, yeah, you know, the submission of uh -huh. the Ugandan uh -huh. women. Uh -huh. And I was like, I have never done this to my own father. Why should I? And they told me, like, that when you go to Rome, you know. Do so, like the Romans. Exactly. Uh -huh. And uh, it was also considered rude if uh, you kneel a certain way. Like, you oh, kneel. There's, yeah, there's, a, you... there's a way you go about it. Exactly. So... <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, so how do you there's that so how do you do it? Your head You held kneel down high? when you're you're sitting on your like legs. You sit on your legs well, not oh. kneeling straight, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh. but I had I was trained by some of my friends also and of course how to invite a man back home. Things that oh. uh, we were never taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then talk, take me through the, the aspect of self-worth, confidence, and also self-awareness. How did you build that through time? Uh, so I, w with education and exposure, uh, as I said earlier, mine was to make sure I don't go back to the slums. Mm -hmm. And of course, I started feeling good about myself and of course also believing in myself. Uh, when I was almost finishing my university, someone invited me to Botswana. So that's why I did my internship. Now you can imagine from Kibera slums to Uganda, now you're in a South African country mm -hmm. doing your internship. And you know, all the self-esteem, the self-value and the self-awareness, though at times I'll crumble in, mm -hmm. not forgetting my experience when I was growing up, but at least I was already empowered, both mm -hmm. by the exposure, the experience, the education, mm -hmm. and of course being encouraged by others through the process and also seeing women that have gone before you and breaking the barriers. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned, was it Light College? Yeah. Uh, what did you pursue there? I did. Uh, in Uganda, mm -hmm. it's not like Kenya. When you finish your Form 4, when mm -hmm. you're doing your advanced level, you take the four subjects that you excelled in uh, your O levels. So I did history, mm -hmm. economics, Kiswahili, and divinity. So okay. divinity is. Uh, is the CRE that mm -hmm. you used to do yeah, in Kenya. Okay. So I did, it's called the head stroke K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is what I did in my form, four, form, five, my form five, form six. Now in Botswana internship. Exactly. Take me through that. So <laughs> I went as, a, as an intern exchange mm -hmm. uh, through an organization called ISEC. It's a university organization that helps students to work abroad. So I was uh, doing my, my internship in University of Botswana and then went to SOS Children's Villages. Uh, so in Botswana, I was more of a... Uh, uh, doing business entrepreneurship with uh, new students, like the first year students. And then I was also doing more of youth empowerment and, you know, like social kind of social development. And I think that's where, like, even uh, my journey started of trying to give back to the community because through my experience in internship and the people that were mentoring me then, mm -hmm. they exposed me to a world that I could not have gotten the exposure in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is basically, that is what I was working with the youth. Right. 
Yeah. All right. So there's uh, there's a high probability that a young person is watching you, or watching this conversation right now, and they're following up with your story and they're relating it on a very personal level because mm -hmm. of the challenges, the background they come from, yeah. and they feel like uh, there's no opportunities completely. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanks to social media right now, yeah. I can be able to log in and yeah. get to see what people from Nigeria are doing, exactly. people from SA are doing, mm -hmm. and I just want, I can be in a position to aspire more, sure. which I believe it was not there during your time. Exactly. So right now, I can be able to see this exposure, yeah. these opportunities out mm -hmm. there, but I don't know how to get there. So what would be your advice to that particular person? You can actually dream and dream again. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are very many opportunities outside there. There are very many uh, full scholarships mm -hmm. in like in different countries. Mm -hmm. I have seen people go to Israel uh, to do like a different master's degree on full scholarship. There's also Sweden where there's also full scholarship for institute, uh, uh, Swedish institute. They actually even give you your air travels, accommodation and food just as you've said, most of the young people are on social media that they are always on maybe Facebook, Instagram. Why don't you just Google? Like Google those schools that give scholarships and then Google those, uh, you know, there are also scholarships in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, like when we continue on with my journey, I'll mention about uh, a project that I'm doing with the young people in uh, rehabilitation centers and the youths from outside that have not been able to uh, get like tertiary education where we are training on uh, solar technology and it's full sponsored where we make sure you're certified by the government and you're also licensed. Mm -hmm. So we get, uh, and that is for both job creation and employment. So there are very many uh, opportunities and they should also get good mentors who can work with them and you know, help them through to get to where they want to be. Right. Yeah. Good stuff there. And then there's the aspect of you now traveling to Israel uh, to pursue uh, masters. Is it your masters. Yeah. Yes. So before I went to Israel, I got like a, a uh, like a short contract mm -hmm. also to work with the street kids with an organization called Tasty Fit and then immediately I got uh, I, I had old I just as you said you go on um, uh, wherever Google and try looking for schools. By then, I wanted to become a diplomat. A story for another day. <laughs> so I was, and my first degree was in bachelor in arts, social sciences. So in tel I applied uh, conflict resolution and mediation, that is masters in public policy, mm -hmm. at Tel Aviv University in Israel. So I got admitted, and then I traveled to Israel, Tel Aviv, mm -hmm. the only African girl mm -hmm. in the entire class. Mm -hmm. Now it also started triggering the girl who was from the only girl from the slums in in a good school. Mm -hmm. I was in Olympic primary, so you can imagine you now have to fight with the experiences that you had. But the in, memories, exactly. Mm -hmm. But I had good friends uh, who worked with me and uh, uh, some uh, uh, whatever students that worked with me and the mentors at the time. Though it was pressure, of course, it comes with it, you do not have, and then it was like an executive master's where you're there. Ukingia kwa darasa, unatoko graduate. Mm -hmm. So books, 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 research yeah. and research, okay. yeah. Take yeah. me through, you've mentioned something very important that you're here in, uh, in, in, in your, the university in Israel and you're battling yeah. uh, the young girl from Kibra, yeah. the memories that you, you carry on. Take me through the, the, uh, the imposter syndrome. The aspect of you feel like, do I really belong here? Did you exactly. get into that space where you question, do I really belong here? I actually wanted to come back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as you as you've just said, like the memories are triggered. You you're like, I don't belong. You know, I, am I bright? Because these were Jewish from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. to Israeli. Those yes. guys are bright. Mm -hmm. So in this class, you're competing with them, and then we are doing mediation, like not the Kenyan style. You see like in Kenya where when someone like does anything wrong, the family is called and then mediation is done. Mm -hmm. Now this is where mediator is called. You have never had that experience. You don't even know about counselors. So sometimes I'll feel like I am not enough to whatever that I was being given there. Mm -hmm. But as I've said, mm -hmm. I think there are people who realized uh, 
the what I was going through, and enough times I'd said I'm going back. And there's a, actually a, a certain lady from Nigeria who was in a diplomatic class who went back home mm -hmm. and blocked everyone. So mm -hmm. it needs someone, as I've said even uh, previously, you need someone to work with you, to mentor you, and to continually like encourage you that you can do it, you can make it. Yeah, you've got it in mm -hmm. you. Yeah. You know, it's one thing.